Get ready for a farmhouse DIY that's super affordable, will take you through multiple seasons, and is so beautiful your family and friends won't believe it was a Dollar Tree DIY. Plus, as always, DIY treats. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Hey guys, it's Aneka, and welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. So I have another fun farmhouse DIY for you. This one is for those little tic-tac-toe games that I've been seeing floating around Pinterest and YouTube. I think they first were made at Pier 1, but they are way more expensive than the one we're gonna make today. And the one we're gonna make is absolutely beautiful. It'll take you through Easter on into spring and you can even have it out as decor and a fun thing to play with through the summer. So I really hope you enjoy it. Also, today's video is part of a collaboration with three other amazing YouTubers who've already started off the crafting for Easter season. So make sure after this, you head down to the description box below and check out the playlist with their videos. You won't be disappointed and it will give you great inspiration. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. Everybody hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when my next video comes out. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Those two things go so far in helping out my channel and they're absolutely free and it helps me to talk to you guys, which has honestly been my favorite part of having a YouTube channel. So, all right, let's get started. Okay, it's time to craft. We're gonna start out with these foam dice. They come in a pack of two at the Dollar Tree and you're gonna need 10 packs. Next, I'm going to take out the dice and I'm gonna paint nine of them with this white chalk paint. Now, I found it easiest to paint three sides, let that dry, and then paint the other three sides. I did one where I tried to paint five of the sides and it was just a mess and it kind of dried and got stuck onto the newspaper. So I went with this three-sided method and that seemed to work out really well. I ended up needing to do three coats of paint all over these dice so that I can make sure to cover up the color that was underneath. And once they were done, they looked like this. Beautiful blank canvases for us to make our game. Next, I'm going to try to age it up a little bit to get that farmhouse feel. So I'm gonna take my brown chalk paint and I'm going to dry brush it onto my dice. And all dry brushing is, is getting a very small amount of paint onto your brush, dabbing it off onto a paper towel so there's even less of it, and just lightly brushing all over the item that you're painting. This will give it that aged look that looks so good with your farmhouse decor, and honestly, it makes them look like they're not even foam dice that were 50 cents a piece. Next, I'm going to just come along the middle parts of the dice, and I'm just gonna make some lines to give it kind of a wood grain effect. Once I've completed all the sides and edges of my dice, it's ready to go to turn it into a tic-tac-toe game. Now, I did notice, guys, that these are not a perfect cube. There is one side that is shorter than the other. So make sure you lay out your dice ahead of time and make sure they fit into whatever you're going to use as your stand because it's going to take up a different amount of space depending on how you position your dice. So I'm just laying mine out, making sure I have all my wood grain facing in the right direction. Now there's a circle on the side of each dice that's about two inches in diameter, and I just wanted to cover it up a little bit and make it a little more pretty. So I found something that was two inches around about, and I just traced that out in circles that I'm going to attach to my dice. Now for this tic-tac-toe game, I'm going to make five X's and four O's. So I need 10 of one pattern and eight of the other. I did make extra circles because I had originally a plan to make two or three of these in this crafting session, but then I realized that my habit of late night crafting probably should not include making multiples of this project all at the same time. I am gonna go back later though and make some more because I think they came out beautifully and I feel like they would be the perfect hostess gift to bring to whoever is hosting your Easter dinner or even a fun thing to put in an Easter basket. 
So now I'm going to just trace out my other pattern. And I used two patterns of paper because I just wanted that contrast and pattern and color. You can go with whatever you like as far as the decor in your house and what matches it. Also guys, I also cut out enough to cover two sides because I kind of wanted to see that wood grained effect on the side, but you could cover all four sides with paper if you'd like, and that would be really beautiful as well. Once I have all my circles cut out, it's time to attach them to my game pieces. So I'm just gonna use Mod Podge and put a little bit on the back and then attach them to the dice. Next, I'm going to continue to make my tic-tac-toe pieces. Now, you guys, my printer was being completely crazy this night, so I actually had to print this out over two pages. I just Googled Easter egg silhouette and bunny silhouette, and I printed out the results. I found one that I liked, printed it out, and I just cut it out onto this printer paper and taped it onto the colored paper that I chose to put on my dice. Now, you're gonna see me here cutting my eggs out in this green color, which is actually one of my favorite colors, but I decided later to switch it out because it's my favorite color. I wanted it to be the actual X's and O's that I'll probably use most of the time. And I switched out to make these eggs a fun teal color, which went perfectly with the pink. But I'm going to just cut out my shapes using the printout as a stencil. And once I've got that out, I have a perfect egg shape. Once again, I'm going to use Mod Podge to attach my eggs to the dice. Then I'm going to use the same process to cut out my bunnies. And now I have a fun Easter themed tic-tac-toe game. Next, I'm going to use the same process to make my X's and O's. Now, I thought this was so beautiful, I wanted to make sure that I could use it for more than just Easter. If you guys have been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that I am kind of indecisive. I like to change my mind and switch things out, and I like things that can be used for more than one purpose. So I wanted this game to be able to be used all year round if I wanted, but definitely through the spring and summer. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out some X's and O's, and that way, once Easter has passed, I can just flip my dice right over and I'll have a tic-tac-toe game that I can still play. I'm just going to attach those with Mod Podge. And that's it, I've got my game. Next, I wanted to make a stand for my game. So this is a picture frame that I bought a while back and didn't end up using. So I'm gonna use it to make a stand for my game. At first I thought I wanted it to be white, so I painted it white, but then I decided that painting it this nice deep brown color would really pull out that rustic effect and the distressing that we put on the dice. 
So I repainted it brown and then I used three of these wooden beads to make the feet form my pedestal. Once that was dry, I turned it over and I popped out the piece that you would use to hang the picture frame. And this came out pretty easily. And then I painted the bottom brown as well. Next, I'm just going to hot glue my feet onto my pedestal. Flip it over and that's it. Now I've got this beautiful game with a farmhouse feel that I can use through the spring and summer. I think this would be perfect to have out in your living room, on your coffee table, or even on your table as your guests are waiting for your Easter meal to be prepared. I can even see this as an outdoor game in the summer while you're hanging out. I just love the way it turned out. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel because now it's time to eat. I'm gonna show you a recipe for cake batter dip and we're gonna eat it with X's and O's in honor of our tic-tac-toe game. So I'm gonna start out this recipe by combining eight ounces of cream cheese at room temperature, eight ounces of whipped topping that has been thawed, and I'm just going to take my hand mixer and mix those two together. Once that's combined, I'm going to add one box of Funfetti cake mix. And I'm going to start out with one third cup of milk. We're gonna combine this all together and it will be very thick. And we'll use another third cup of milk or as much as you feel you need to get that to be the consistency that you want it to be. We're just gonna continue mixing and that's it you guys this stuff is so good it is addicting it comes together so quickly and your guests are not going to want to stop eating it i'm going to top it off with some fun sprinkles because you know sprinkles make everything taste a little bit sweeter and i'm going to use these valentine's pretzels to eat with it because i love that it had x's and o's it goes right along with our theme for today I also really love that sweet and salty taste, but you can use Nilla wafers, animal crackers, whatever you want to dip out this delicious treat. And that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed these DIYs that I had to show you today. If you enjoyed them, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're making this Easter and spring season. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you the next time when we repeat it all again.